Joining me now is the number one UFC welterweight contender who takes on Darren Till in the UFC Liverpool main event on May 27th. It is Stephen Wonderboy Thompson back on the program. Stephen, how's it going? Thanks so much for the time. Oh, man, anytime, my friend. Always, always a pleasure hanging out with you, my friend. Doing great, though. Doing great. Ready for this fight coming up May 27th. And uh, just got done training, me and Chris Wyman tonight. And, man, we're, we're ready to rock and roll. Good to hear. Thank you again uh, for taking the time this evening. Uh, first things first, how was your Easter? Uh, I assume spending a lot of great time with your family? Oh, yeah, definitely, man. I mean, uh, of course, we have the, the whole Wyman family in uh, for Easter last week, this week. Uh, my, my, my brother and uh, Chris's sister had a baby uh, uh, a few weeks ago, and, and so the Wyman family not only in to help me out with this training camp, but to see, spend time with uh, their new nephew. So, um, yeah, man, get everybody in. It was, it was awesome. That's awesome. So that would be your nephew as well? Yes, it is. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> trying, to, trying to do the math, the family math in my head on, on the spot. Uh, sometimes it gets a little yeah, bit Yeah, man, I, I mean, I, I guess you can say we're like brother-in-laws, but, it, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're family. We're definitely family. So um, it's cool to, to, to bring in another member of the family, you know, into the world and into this fighting family. So it's cool. Friends and family, it's really all the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, anyways, last time we spoke was right after the Jorge Masvidal fight. You got the job done at uh, MSG in New York last November. Um, you, you, Of course, we were talking a lot about your injured thumb at the time. And also, there until uh, you remember when they announced the fight, but it wasn't actually official. You didn't accept it. You, you didn't actually hear about it. And then all of a sudden, Dana White did, you know, said that thing at that uh, media event or whatever, Darren Till versus Stephen Thompson in Liverpool, and obviously it wasn't uh, happening. Now, you at, at the time, you weren't so into that fight. You didn't think, well, A, you didn't really know much about Till. You didn't really think he, that was a fight for you. You wanted something bigger. So why are we now talking about you versus Darren Till as a done deal? Well, um, directly after the Masvidal fight, I wasn't really sure where my thumbs were. I haven't had an x-ray on them yet. I knew they something major was, was going on, and I wasn't going to be ready to fight there until uh, for the first time uh, when they wanted to fight. And um, ended up having to, you know, having getting x-rays in my eyes and stuff. Ended up breaking my thumb, tore ligament in my right thumb. And it just didn't make sense, uh, you know, for me to be, be ready for when they wanted me ready for, for Till. Uh, another thing was, um, A, you know, as a lot of people are saying, didn't really – know who Darren Till was until after he fought Cerrone, you know? So he, here's a guy who's ranked number seven, jumping past a lot of other people who, you know, who deserves that shot, and you know, to face me. And I also wanted to kind of see where the welterweight division, where was it going? Who was Tyron going to fight next? There was talk about an interim title. I wanted to know if I was at the top of that list before I started taking anything else. Um, it looks like, you know, obviously found out a few weeks ago that's not going to happen. Um, you got... Um, you know, Colby Covington and RDA are going to be fighting for that. So I also, so now, you know, my, my thumbs are feeling great, been in shape, been, been training, um, you know, I wanted to keep myself busy. And what better guy to, to, to do that with than, you know, a phenomenal striker such as uh, Dan Till. And I wanted to test myself against, you know, everybody saying this new breed coming up uh, to let everybody know that I'm here to stay. You know, I want to be the number one contender. I want to be going for that next title. Uh, going, I'm, not, I'm not giving up on it, so. That, that's the plan. Did it take any sort of convincing from the UFC? Because, again, I mean, not that long ago you weren't so down for the fight. Now you, you took it, although maybe it's not ideal for you. Was the money just right? Did you sort of have to take it in that regard? What, you know, was there one thing that really changed, maybe one incentive? Did anything that they gave you just sort of made you have to take the fight? Um, not really have to, but, I mean, we did do some negotiating with the UFC. I mean, because to me, it was basically a lose-lose for me. You know, rank number one, fighting the number seven guy in this guy's hometown. Um, so, yeah, we did some negotiation. Things are great, man. Contracts are awesome. And, and uh, it definitely was, uh, you know, puts a smile, a smile on my face. Makes it worth me actually going out there fighting, you know, this, this, this monster in, in his hometown of Liverpool. And, you know, I've been in enemy territory before, but, you know, the, the, the fans uh, in Liverpool – are so passionate about their sport, obviously, and their fighters. So it's uh, it's going to be pretty interesting, man. It's going to be fun. And even though you did accept the fight, and and it's a done deal for May twenty seventh in Liverpool, England. I is, is it fair to say that you still don't really think it actually makes sense? 
Say, say that one more time. I'm sorry. Just uh, e- even though you accepted it, I mean, you, it's a done deal. It's happening. Is it fair to say at all that you still don't really think it actually makes sense, like the matchup? Well, I mean, I think the matchup is, is good, you know, and I'm excited about it because, you know, most of the guys in the welter division that I have faced have mostly been, been grapplers, been wrestlers. So it, it puts a smile on my face, and it really excites me to actually go out there and face somebody, uh, another striker. You know, you can just stand up, you can strike. Obviously, I'm prepared wherever the fight goes. I mean, most of the guys, even Masvidal, I expected him to, to stay standing, but he ended up shooting for the leg several times in that fight for my legs. And eventually these guys, they want to shoot him. Um, um, so I'm, I'm prepared everywhere. But it excites me to actually go out there and face off against another striker, not a wrestler. And Because that, that's my background. Everybody knows I'm a karate fighter. Um, most of my... Um, my, you know, pro uh, fight career of being kickboxing. So, uh, yeah, man, it, it, it makes sense. Actually, it's going to be fun stylistically. Um, and, you know, it does kind of make sense for the UFC because I know they want to hit that market, that Liverpool market. I believe this is the first fight they're going to have in Liverpool. It is, yeah. He's from that hometown, from that hometown, from his, you know, his hometown. And, you know, he, he's a talker, man. And the UFC is kind of going that route with those guys who go out there and, and – uh, you know, got to get the gap and can back it up. So it makes sense in that aspect. But when it comes to rankings, I don't think so, you know. Um, but, you know, we're going to go out there and have some fun anyway. And, um, uh, you know, I'm prepared everywhere. I'm not giving – like I said, I'm not giving up on that title. I'm not taking this guy lightly whatsoever because he could – you know, I think anybody in the UFC has the potential to put you out, to knock you out, to take you down, submit you. So I'm going to be uh, at my best when I step out there against him. Does it take like that extra push for you to to stay motivated? Because I think maybe some people might look at this matchup and think, "Hey, Stephen might not be the most motivated." Even though that, I mean, although you would say that's completely false, um, it, it, has it or, or do you expect it'll be at all more difficult than usual to stay motivated because there's not much to gain, or or is a fight a fight in your sort of eyes? Yeah, in, in my yeah, in my eyes, man, it doesn't matter who who, who it is. I mean. A fight is a fight, man, and I'm not I'm not going to go out there and um, not be 100%. That's what gives me the confidence to even step out there. If if I feel that um, I'm not motivated, then maybe I should be looking for a, 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 a career change or, or maybe just kind of put my fight career on hold. Um, I am I, I'm always excited to step out there, no matter who it is against. If it's the lowest guy or the number one or, or the number two or, or the champion, man, I train as if they are the champion. That I'm going to come back with that belt. I mean, I got a lot of kids back home who look up to me and watch every move that I make. And uh, you know, when I every time I step out there, I, I think of them. Every time I, I step on the mat and train, that's who I think of, man. I think of the people that help me get get me here, so they motivate me. It's not really the the my opponent, but Everybody else around me that motivates me to get there, and I'm more motivated than ever. It's been since November since I fought, so I've had some time to kind of heal up. And uh, man, I'm I'm um, itching to this to get back out there and do it again. Now, you're not a guy to get angry at really anybody, but does it at all bother you that you know he's sort of the up and coming guy? You're the veteran as far as this matchup goes. You've been around a bit longer. You're higher ranked. You're number one. You can't you can't really get any higher other than the champion. Um, he's lower down, he's number seven, but it's his hometown. He's sort of the big star of this Liverpool show. Does that bother you whatsoever? Not, you know, not at all, man. I mean, it, it, is it, is at first when I, when I first heard, I'm like, why am I finding the number seven guy in his hometown? Like, what's, what's the USC plan? Usually it's the other know? way around, right? Ex- exactly. That's what I'm saying. But, but then I'm, I'm sitting here like, like, you know what? I've never been to Liverpool. I've never been to, you know, overseas like that. I've fought in Hungary before, but I've never been to Liverpool. And uh, that excites me actually being there. But not only that, but, but it's a whole other market. It's a whole new, new place for me. And it gives me a chance to say, hey, you know, I went over to, you know, even though I'm ranked number one, fighting the number seven guy in his hometown, and I still came out with my hand raised. You know, that's, that's what I want. That's what I want. Um, that's what I visualize whenever I'm thinking about the fight. You know, it's so like I said, uh, rank ranking wise, it doesn't make sense. But as a fighter, yeah, man, I- I'm going to your hometown. I'm going to beat you in front of your people. Let's do this. Well, it's funny. I know we just saw Jimmy Manoa versus Jan Blahovich too, and I am sort of going off track a little bit here, but it- it'll make sense when I'm done. I mean, Blahovich won 
when in, in Manoa's hometown, and Manoa won way back in 2015 in Poland, where Blahovich is from. So maybe fighting in enemy territory isn't the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> exactly, man. You know, I, I, I'm going to go out there with a smile on my face over there. And I know there's going to be a lot of people in Liverpool that are going to want me to lose, and I know the fans there are very passionate about their fighters. So it's going to be very interesting on my part, but... You know, no matter what the fans or anybody throws at me, I'm going to have a smile on my face. I'm going to be respectful. And um, I'm going to go out there and have some fun, hopefully put on a show for, for the fans there and, and around the world, people who tune in. And uh, that's how I've always been. And I, I try to be a gentleman of the sport, not just to, to the sport, but to my opponents as well. So no matter what kind of trash talk, I, I know it's part of the game. Well, that sort of leads me to my next question. I did want to mention the Liverpool fans just because, of course, everybody in that arena will be rooting against you. You'll hear a lot of boos when you walk out, I would think. Uh, but we've heard so many interesting and good things about this event. I mean, you remember the uh, Dublin event back in 2014 when McGregor fought Diego Brandao before Conor McGregor was Conor McGregor, really. Uh, the, you know, I wasn't there, but from everything we hear from people that were there, the atmosphere was second to none. It, we've never seen an event like that. This is supposed to be Dublin 2.0. Um, are, are you sort of excited to meet these fans that are uh, supposedly ever so passionate? Oh, I, I, I really am, man. Um, I, you know, I, I do have a lot of fans, and I have people that message me and say, hey, you know, we're from this area, and, you know, we are fans of you. Just to let you know, these guys are very passionate about what they do, man, <laughs> and, and they're fighters. And um, you, you know what? It, when it comes down to it, I know they're going to be they're going to be cheering for for him. But if it wasn't for me, they wouldn't have this fight. Of course, of course, they could have picked anybody to go out there and face um, um, uh, Darren Till, and it would still sell tickets. But but I'm I'm the one that's stepping out there. You know, I'm the one that. Um, that are going into enemy territory, but uh, giving the fans kind of what they want. This is the fight that they wanted. They didn't. They didn't want Darren Till fighting anybody else. They wanted Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, and I'm glad that I can actually go out there and give that to them. When it comes down to it, man, they're going to be cheering. They're going to be making noise. It's going to be. It's going to be crazy because of me and Darren, not Darren and somebody else. It's going to be me and Darren. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm excited about, man. I'm. I'm. Uh, it's, it, like I said, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's a one, this is like once in a lifetime opportunity for me to actually go up there and do that. I can look back and back, you know, yeah, fifteen years from now or twenty years from now and say, you know what? Remember that time I went to this guy's hometown and it was crazy. We put on the best fight. It was fight of the night. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what that's what I think about. That's cool. Do you expect that you'll spend a little more time in Liverpool after the fight just to? So- to, to see the city, because obviously during fight week you'll be focused on the fight, weight cut, etc. Do you want to sort of spend a little time afterwards, or do you think you'll go right back home? Oh no, man! We're definitely going to stick around, hang out, and uh, hopefully get, get to meet some of the fans there after the fight. Uh, we're actually going to go a few days early just to kind of get accustomed to stuff, and and it's only like a five hour time change, which isn't which, it wasn't crazy, but still we want to get out there and kind of get kind of get acclimated to the atmosphere a little bit. And um, so I, I, I am really excited to go around and, and, and see, and hopefully some of the fans there after the fight can uh, maybe point us in some good directions to actually go visit some places. So, yeah, we're definitely going to be sticking around. And how are your thumbs? I assume you're fully recovered because we're talking about an upcoming fight. How, since when exactly? <laughs> um, actually, a few weeks. Actually, we started feeling good about a month ago started to get to the point where I can actually grab, I can wrestle, I can spar without without any pain. Um, I'm still doing physical therapy just to keep these the, the thumbs strong, uh, you know, for the fight. And for not really for the fight, but for training camp that you're putting your body through. All the heavy wrestling and stuff. i got Chris Wyman in right now, who's a big 185-er. Uh, you know, walks around about 225, 230, who's a crazy wrestler. So um, I wouldn't be facing off against him or training with him if my thumbs were, weren't great. So they're feeling good, man. I'm I, like I said, I'm ready to rock and roll. Fair enough. Uh, what do you make of the Waltway title picture right now? Just because Tyron Woodley has been out since the Damian Maya fight back in last July, so it's been a while. He, of course, is still recovering from his shoulder injury. Um, it, supposedly, he wants to come back in July. We, you know, who knows though? Anything can happen, and the division. We we're seeing a lot of uh, contenders sort of on the come up right now. Kamara Usman's on, on the rise. There's a few others. 
and it's sort of getting backed up. Now we just had uh, Rafael Dos Anjos versus Colby Covington booked for an interim title fight, which to me doesn't make the most sense in the world. Um, wh- you know, where do you fit? I mean, you're number one, but now with the interim title fight, do you get a title shot right after? It's kind of con- confusing. It, exactly. It really is. And it's got to the point where I'm just like, ah, you know, what? I'm just going to, whoever they put against, I'm going to fight. But it is kind of confusing, man. I mean, you got some, you got some monsters coming up in the world division. I mean, Usman, who's a strong wrestler, man, just an athlete. You got Pontinibia, who's got a heavy hands, who can knock you out, knock your head off. I mean, you, you got some really good fighters, man, coming up. Um, yes, I am ranked number one. Yes, Colby Covington is fighting Artie. Yeah, I think they should be announcing that. Um, I think, ever, I think they already have, but it's, we, we have a press conference, gonna, which I'm going to be there for Friday with a lot of welterweights in the division that are coming up. So. And to be honest, I got my eye on every one of them. Um, yeah, Tyron Woodley, he had his shoulder, shoulder surgery. I know, he's, I know he's healing up, but we'll see. He says he's ready for August or July or August. So uh, I, I hear July, and then I hear August. I'm not really sure which one it is, but um, I know a, a, sh- a shoulder surgery does take a little bit of time to, to heal up from that. I mean, I'm not really sure what the extent of it was, if it was major or not, but uh, – uh, we'll see, man. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I think, I think if somebody, which I don't see anybody right now in the top five, that's that's going to be Tyron, except for me. Um, I, I really don't. RDA, he's a great fighter, but I think he's just a, a smaller one seventy. Tyron, I don't, you don't really see feel his strength until you're out there and that octagon with him. I mean, he grabs you, it, you, you feel it's like what the heck did I get myself into? This guy's strong, man, and. Um, and uh, so, and the same thing, Colby Covington, he's a strong wrestler, but that's, that, that's you know, Tyron Woodley's one of the best wrestlers in the division. So I, I just don't see it. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. I know I ended up, I fought Tyron twice. The first one was, was epic, man. We had fight of the night. It was a great fight. Second one, the fans didn't like it too much, but uh, it is what, what it is. And I understand if, you know, if I come out with a win over Darren, I may have to fight one, one or two more times before I step out there and fight again. But. That's okay, man. I'm a, I consider myself a young 35-year-old, and, and I'm going to do this as, much, as long as my body will let me or when my, my coach, my pops, tells me I'm done. That's when I'm done. Because, you know, the fight game, it, it's, for me, it, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, it's fun for me. This is not, I don't consider this a job. I think my, my job that I take very passionately is teaching karate. This is just uh, for fun, man. And the money's just a bonus. <laughs> Well, and on the note of RDA Covington for the interim title next um, next month, do you think that should be for a title? I mean, again, Tyron Woodley, it's not he he's been pretty active. I mean, he had you know the two fights with you pretty back to back, November of 2016, then March last year, he he defended it you know a couple times, then he fought Maya. Uh, I don't know. Do you it think this should sense. be happening? No, I don't. I don't think so at all. I mean, if he's out for another year or two, then probably yeah, I, I think you should. But if he's saying he's going to be back in July or August, man, there's no reason why you should be fighting for an interim title. And it almost, like, diminishes the, the value of the title, I think, because they're just throwing it out there. Like, it's, oh, yeah, okay, you can fight for an interim title, sure. You know, I don't think they should be fighting for an interim title. Um, I, if, he's, if he says he'll be back in July or August, then just say, hey, the winner of this will fight for the title. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the UFC's playing at. When it, or what their thinking is when it comes to the interim title, but they're just kind of, you can fight for it any time. Uh, anybody can fight for an interim title. So I don't, I don't think it makes sense for them to be fighting for that if he says he's going to be ready in July. And uh, you know, I, I've personally, I think there should be no interim title, but if, they, if they're if they so set on doing a Waltweight interim title while Woodley is uh, on, on the way back, or, you know, recovering still, then I'm, I'm not just saying this because I'm talking to you, but number one versus number two makes more sense than number two versus number three. I think you versus RDA for the interim title. Again, if they're going to do the interim title, if that's what they want, why not have you in there? (laughs) You know what? I've been saying the same thing, so it's good to hear you say that, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) Why do you think, though? I mean, why do you think they're sort of passing over you? I mean, do they like the Darren Till fight that much? I mean, I don't know. Again, confusing. Yeah, (laughs) I mean, I think it's just politics. I think that they are trying to make that market out there, and He's calling me out, so why not make that happen? And I fought for the title twice, and they just I guess they don't want to see it again uh, until I prove myself again. I think that's just what the UFC is thinking, and that's just, that's just my thinking. You may have another opinion, but 
that's just that's that's uh, what's kind of going through my head right now. Maybe because RDA and Covington are on longer winning streaks, so somehow that makes them more marketable. Maybe that's what they're getting at. Maybe it's because Covington is Covington, and in Brazil that might, well, I guess sell tickets. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But you know what? I, that's what I'm thinking too. I'm like, I like, and smiling, thinking about fighting in Liverpool. But imagine what Colby Covington is going to go through when he goes to Brazil. Oh my! Like he's gonna, he's gonna, they're gonna kill him. They're going to kill this guy. They, he better have security around him. Like mine will probably be in a walk in the park compared to what Kobe Covington's going to go through when he's in Brazil. After all, what he's talked about the you know the country and, and, and uh, everybody there. So I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, uh, uh, who do you think uh, wins that fight? Who who walks away the interim champion? You know what? I really would love to see RDA uh, win that. I really would want to see him win that. I mean, he's he's been fighting for so long, and he's, he was the champion in 155. I think it's pretty cool that he's coming up, and he's where where, where he's at at the 170 division, being a, a former 155er. Donald Cerrone was on the same track as well. But, um, yeah, man, I thought he did very well against Robbie Lawler, even though Robbie Lawler ended up tearing his ACL, I believe, in the third round. So that kind of took half of Robbie Lawler out of the out of the out of the fight. You know, he could barely stand up on that leg. But um, RDA definitely kept his cool. He kept his cool and in, in, uh, coming out with the win. So um, I'd like to see RDA. And so say you get past there until May twenty seventh, and then I guess by then uh, RDA versus Covington would be over, and by then Woodley would be very close to getting back. Would you want to wait for Woodley versus the RDA Covington winner to happen? Would you want another fight with I don't know Santiago Ponzinibbio Usman winner? Do you? I mean, I know we're sort of maybe getting ahead of myself, but we're looking a little into the distance, but. Um, I, you know what, it, it really doesn't, I would like to see where, what happens, you know, after this fight, depending on, you know, how I come out of this fight, uh, with, hopefully with no injuries, man, we're looking to hopefully fight it another time. Um, but I would like to kind of see where that, where that is going, you know, who's going to win this fight. It's going to be Tyron. It's going to be RDA. If RDA wins it, I think I'll get that next title shot. If Tyron wins it, I may have to fight one more time before I, before I fight it for it again. So it's kind of, it, it all comes down to this fight against whoever wins against Colby Covington and RDA against Tyron. Yeah, it it does, and uh, I guess that'll be the uh, either the key to another title shot for you or the key to a <laughs> fight with somebody else. <laughs> um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's it. One last thing before I do let you go. I, I listened briefly to an interview you did, I believe, actually today with James Lynch. You mentioned something about changing up your weight cut. I know you uh, you're, you're not totally gone from perfecting athletes, but you'll be working with a group over in Liverpool already. Is that the only change? I know you it made you made it sound like you're changing something more with your weight cut. You're trying something different. Is it simply just who you're working with, or are your weight cutting techniques getting changed as well? Oh no, no, no! It's just who I'm working okay. with. You know, they're, they're they're already out there in Liverpool. I mean, literally, we have my weight cut. I I walk around very light. I'm not a big welterweight. You know, I walk about 190. A lot of these guys walk around over 200 pounds. Um, and I was talking earlier about, you know, we were talking about the Robert Whitaker and stuff like that. He w- used to walk around 215, 220. So it kind of made sense for him to move up to that 185 because the 170 just kind of killed him. But I'm kind of in that weird area, you know, like I'm, I'm not a big welterweight. So, I mean, it really sucks to get down to 170, but I can do it fairly easy. So, I mean, it, it's really nothing, nothing major has changed. Okay. Um, last thing for you, Wonder Boy. How do you get the job done? UFC Liverpool main event. You're taking on Darren Till, May 27th. You mentioned earlier that you know you said something about fight of the night. Is that sort of what you're eyeing? Is that sort of the the main prediction? It's going to be a firefight, a fun five rounder, or or do you think you get the job done inside the distance? Man, you know, I know Darren Till said he's going to finish me in the third round. I don't see it happening, man. And of course, everybody that knows me knows that. I don't, I don't go out there predicting any knockouts. I let it happen, man. I want to go out there. I'm ready for a five, five in a round war because that's mentally what is one of the worst case scenarios. Either I get knocked out or it goes to a five, five in a round decision. Um, and I want to be ready for that. If it, if the knockout happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm prepared to go out there and give it all I've got, all five rounds. I'm just telling you guys, it, it's going to be fireworks. It is going to be fireworks. I know Darren Till is going to be fighting in his hometown. He's going to want to make it big. He's going to go out there and fight for the fans, for the people, for the first guys home hometown. So I know it's going to be tough and I'm going to be ready for every, every step of the way. When I visualize it, me with my hand raised, 
You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of people go out there looking for the knockout, and when it doesn't happen, it messes with them mentally. I go out there thinking, hey, it's going to be a tough fight, but he better keep his hands up because I don't be head kicking a, a, a lot. Well, before I let you go, remind my audience where they can find you on social media, and if there's anybody you'd like to thank or give a shout-out to, the floor is yours. Well, first up, I would like to thank you for having me on, my friend. I always have a great time chatting with you. Uh, but you guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter uh, at Wonderboy MMA. Facebook is Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I'd like to thank my management team, uh, Paradigm Management, and all my coaches and everybody that helped me get to this point right now. So thank you very much, guys.